A pleasant day to all of you, dear students of San Carlos Seminary Graduate School of Theology. Today, I'll be sharing with you my personal reflections on the developmental aspect of basic official communities of San Roque Cathedral Parish in view of the COVID-19 pandemic, March 2020 to December 2020. This COVID-19 pandemic has given us desolations and consolations. In our communities, the desolations come in the form of the absence of basic necessities like food, decent work, and some financial concerns. There has been a common cry for ayuda. Our parish office has received many letters from the barangay officials and particular families requesting for ayuda. When you give to a group, another group will also be asking. Unfortunately, some are demanding in a negative way. The need is really high. There were times when people were flocking within our parish building. They were requesting for ayuda, which we cannot give immediately for pastoral reasons. On the other hand, one of the greatest consolation is the opportunity to respond to these realities. There has been a consolation on the level of the parish community and basic education communities because their organic relationship was enriched through the social action services they have rendered towards the needy. The basic education communities, which we will call BDCs, were also the ones delivering this help to those in need within the grassroots level. In general, the parish community was able to give 14 waves of ayuda to the poorest of the poor. This means 14,000 ayuda from the parish corporal works of mercy fund and they were also from generous benefactors. Last December 2020, we were able to give Pamasco package to 1,500 families in need and to 250 lay volunteers serving the church. It is a great consolation indeed because this pandemic has also ignited our social action services to the poorest of the poor on the parish level and on the BEC level. This discussion focuses on the basic ecclesial communities of San Roque Cathedral Parish, to which I am a parochial vicar. I shall now discuss my pastoral reflections on two points concerning the basic ecclesial communities of the said parish in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. First, concept of reflection, developmental basic ecclesial communities. Our BECs are highly liturgical before the pandemic. This means they are active when it comes to the sacraments and sacramentals of the Church. Our BECs has been responding to the liturgical needs of our parishioners at the grassroots level. In view of this pandemic, they were able to reach the developmental level, the second stage of BECs. According to Claver, there are three stages of BECs. The first stage is the liturgical level. This is the stage wherein the community participation is strongly expressed on its prayer life. The priority of this level is the spiritual life expressed in worship, particularly in the sacraments and sacramentals of the church. The second level is the developmental stage. This means the BECs go beyond the liturgical aspect, for they strive to translate their prayer life towards social action. This level highlights social action. The third stage is the liberational level. This means that the BECs are able to make themselves a two circle of discernment wherein there is a reflection from the problems they are facing. In other words, our BECs are at the developmental stage because they were able to render liturgical celebrations in the online and physical manner. 
we were able to celebrate Aguinaldo Masses in selected areas with double attendance of mass followers and lay servants in the area level. The social action services to the poorest of the poor are also rendered as they are collaborating with the parish community. However, our BECs are not yet on the level of the liberational stage. But as their pastor, I can say that they are on the journey to attain that highest level. In this aspect, we can see that these BECs are moving forward. PCP2 teaches that to move forward is our Christian identity. Moving forward means loving each other with Christ's love and living one's life with His life. To cease moving forward is to betray our identity as Catholics. I must admit that on the first weeks of the strict lockdowns within our area, I was expecting that the participation of our lay servants from the parish and the BECs will be less than much, but I was wrong. It is in these difficult times, the pandemic, that we are ignited to move forward as a community of faith. Despite the desolations that we are facing, the body of Christ is alive in our BECs because it is moving forward. One learning I had is whenever BECs are responding to the signs of the times, particularly to the problems of the times, if they are guided by their pastor accordingly, they will surely develop as a community of faith. Second concept of reflection, basic initial communities that builds relationship. In our parish context, BECs were observed before as a bagsakan ng gawain, areas of liturgical celebrations, recipients of ayuda, and totally dependent on the parish level. But this pandemic has developed them from these mindsets. Development is evident in the relationships that these communities were able to build and deepen. PCP2 defines BECs as a small communities of Christians, usually of families, who gather together around the Word of God and the Eucharist. These communities are united to their pastors, but are ministered to regularly by lay leaders. The members know each other by name and share their concerns on both material and spiritual aspects. They have a strong sense of belongingness and of responsibility for one another. In many ways, our BECs were able to establish their responsibility for one another because of these new and dependent relationships. It is a fact that the parish community sends ayuda to them but it is also a fact that these BECs were sensitive on their grassroots level to the point that they have rendered social action services independently from the parish. These BECs were also able to build relationships to the poorest of the poor. Another consolation from this pandemic is that we were able to gather a database of the poorest of the poor within our areas. On the other hand, they were able to befriend generous benefactors within their areas. These benefactors are not extremely rich. I can claim that some, some of them are also poor and some are on the middle class. Despite their economic standing, the important thing is their generosity. They are giving because they know that what they will give will reach the needy. I remember one benefactor. I am confused because as she gives generously, she also asks me to pray for her economic standing. I was able to ask her politely about this matter, but she explained, Father, kasi, di ba hindi ka naman nagbibigay? hanggat hindi ka umaaray. Kaya magbibigay po ako kahit may aray. 
This brought me to a realization. Si Jesus hindi lang nagbigay ng may aray. Si Jesus ay nagbigay ng kanyang buong buhay. Our BBC leaders gained an amount of respect at the areas because they were the ones who are facilitating their spiritual and moral needs in a sense. I remember vividly when I visited two of our BECs to give ayuda to the needy. There were claims that our chapel leaders can be a sure winner in the next barangay official elections, maybe because of their active presence. In general, this pandemic made our BECs build relationships. Relationships at Intra were developed because one's charism was ignited. The sum of all their charisms made them a developed BEC. Relationships at Extra were also deepened. This is seen at the partnerships from one BEC to another, at the collaboration with barangay officials, and with the lay servants at the parish level. These relationships are made for the continuous building up of the church at the BEC level. It is also a personal consolation for me because I was able to befriend most of our barangay officials within our territorial jurisdiction. My dear brothers seminarians, I'd like now to share to you brief points of reflection on how to respond from what I've shared to you. First of all, you must consider your kapatiran or bukluran as a BEC. The question is, are you moving forward? Is there something happening on your BECs? Reflect again on how BCP2 defines BECs. Do you have such qualities? If not, follow it. Build the Church of Christ within your kapatiran as BCP2 teaches. As Dagmang states, BEC is not a fair work. It is not just a work of your kapatiran leader or one of your formators. It is a pastoral work for everyone who is part of it. Do not depend your development from the instructions from above. Do it also from below, from your level. If you want to be a good pastor of BECs, begin by developing your kapatiran now. Second, Clever states three stages of BECs. It is good to ask what kind of BEC is your kapatiran. Is it only on the liturgical level, which is centered only on your faith sharings and the praying of the liturgy of ours? Do you have a social action aspect? Are you willing to discern with each other? Or are you afraid to be vulnerable? so that your weaknesses will not be written in your evaluation. Each kapatiran has strengths and weaknesses. Were you able to identify them and address them as your responsibility to one another? It is also good to reflect. How have you built your relationship with one another? Is the relationship centered on the Word of God? Or is it from something else? It is my prayer, dear brothers in Christ, that as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of BCP2, we may be able to enrich ourselves with basic ecclesial communities. BEC is the expression of the church renewed according to BCP2. Tagmang teaches that the quality of the parish is identified with the level of its BECs. I'd like to end this sharing with this inspiration from Christus Vivid. My dear brothers, make yourselves touch by Christ so that you can build up a church that is young, a church that is alive, a church that is moving forward. Remember, the first step of ministering to the church is to be touched by Christ. My paternal blessings and greetings to all of you. This is Father Philip Angelo G. Garcia of the Diocese of Caloocan. Let us continue praying for each other. God bless you all.